Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rush From Off The Cuff. Today we have um, a bit of a comparison review that has been uh, pretty highly requested, uh, essentially since the release of the Christopher Ward Trident Mark III. A lot of people wanted to know how it stacks up to the Genoa Ocean Rover as well as the Monta Ocean King. Now, both of these watches are actually priced above uh, the Christopher Ward Trident, but you know what? Um, you know, this, the Rolex Submariner is priced above the Black Bay, right? And the Black Bay is priced above the Monta. And th there's a certain kind of idea that you can get 95% of this watch for half the price, right? You, so the Black Bay, essentially, let's say the Black Bay 58, is, is like 95% Rolex Sub uh, at half the price, right? And then the Monta is probably about 95% percent of the Black Bay 58 about half the price and now the Christopher Ward is it 95 percent Monta Ocean King at about half the price um so I'll try to keep this pretty quick and, and really just kind of cover some of the key points and give you guys an idea of scale and kind of point out a couple design cues that really um you know differentiate these watches as well as kind of you know draw some of the parallels as you can see here there's obviously some red accents that carry over uh this definitely you know all three of these watches in a way pay homage to rolex's kind of black and steel um you know blueprint for what a sports diver should be um and they do it in a lot of different ways uh you know with the Genoa, it's definitely more of a direct um homage and uh just a quick note there's actually going to be a new release the Genoa ocean rover uh second gen uh that's going to have a couple of updates to it but the big update is going to be uh the use of uh, Salida SW200s as as the new base movement you can still actually um, option out to use their you know pseudo in-house movement um, but the main thing is really going to be the use of a ceramic inlay so I think that's really going to be great um, so yeah with you know it's definitely more of a, a direct homage and it, it does it does a little bit of mishmashing from different references uh, that they kind of like to put together the, the finishing is very nice. It's really what it's known for at the price point. Uh, it was heavily discounted at the beginning, but now you're starting to see the prices that you're buying it for um, to be a little bit closer to it, its its actual retail price. Um, with the Monta, it's it's been a hit. It's actually the second generation. This is the second gen Ocean King. So it's been refined since its first release. They moved to a thinner movement um, that's more accessible in the SW300. Um, this thing's gorgeous. They made it cheaper, but somehow made it better. I'm loving it. Uh, it's still, to me, one of the top divers that are out there today. So this new Trident is really in good company. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, get these in hand and take a closer okay, look. Okay, so first let's actually start with the Ocean Rover. Now, as you can see, uh, when you compare the scale here, here's it's in a 42. Um, it does wear uh, a bit smaller, um, not just because of the size, but because of the proportions from the previous model. I'll be doing a separate video where I actually kind of do follow the whole evolution of the Trident line. Um, but here, uh, just so you can guys, you guys can see kind of an idea. Of course, as you know, is going to be more classic Rolex uh, proportions with the maxi dial, um, but with the uh, older. Um, you know, non-maxi case style there. But as far as proportions go, as you guys can see, uh, the 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 Trident definitely has a more modern feel to it, larger, more expansive dial with the indices pushed out a bit more. Then, of course, you're going to have the more modern uh, bezel insert, which uh, the Genoa will have uh, coming soon for release. But in the meantime, uh, there's definitely quite a big lead out here. Um, and then some differences as far as the scale goes. Um, but uh, it is larger, but similar in the way that that the taper goes, right? So here you have a 22 that tapers down to an 18 versus here you have a 20 on the Genoa um, that actually tapers down to a 16, then comes to a 20 millimeter clasp. So actually here, you know, it's it's very similar proportions, um, you know, just at a larger scale here. And you can see the profile as well. Um, definitely a lot more detail, um, of, of course, uh, to the case. And, and you would expect that um, because this is a newer 
model and and they really you know they recently just kind of updated evolved added some beautiful creases and lines and and highlights to this case but you know generally following um you know the that same kind of architecture that rolex is so masterfully done in creating you know a dive watch and, and an everyday sports watch so um you can see here that the scale is definitely quite different, although, you know, it's only a millimeter larger, you know, on either side of the this uh, case. So, um, you know, but on wrist, uh, when we get to the shots there, you'll see that the way, you know, the way this is going to go with more three separate pieces here for the, for the case, you have that, you know, that bubble back there, you have the mid case, then you have the, uh, the bezel on top and then the crystal um, slightly protruding there. Uh, that box dome versus here it's going to be broken down as well but you're going to have some additional character lines and creases that really help kind of blend that mid case uh, to be just a little bit more than it is um, you know although it's still three pieces you know a, a, a bezel a mid case and then the case back uh, because of those lines and those creases, it definitely helps mold everything and, and make it disappear and, and actually spread load that visual weight a bit better. Um, as far as the clasp goes, you know, um, we have a, a similar tie-in, right? With the milling and the machining, it lines up with those center links. Of course, we went to the, light, the wider center links here versus the thinner center links here. Um, you don't have this you know, the second lock there, you know, the flip lock, uh, very much, uh, you know, signature Rolex from that standpoint with the glide lock there, as you guys know, um, basically pop it down in and out. It's uh, tried and tested. And this is basically just Jeannot's take on, um, you know, a very well known, very well loved and popular, uh, you know, set up there versus with the trident you know one thing also you get with this bracelet uh with the quick release you're also going to get this quick adjust system which has definitely been refined over time you used to be able to kind of see everything on the side here now it's it's all milled um and hidden and tucked away really nicely you just pull this little lever here and you can make some nice micro adjustments about a whole length's worth of adjustment which is really nice so basically you can pull it all the way out Put it on your wrist and then just kind of click it into place to where you need it um as far as the bezel action you know with this particular Jeannot it's more of the push down and turn um which is to be more reminiscent of actually the older versions and then the updated model will have a bit of a change there here it has its really just modern beautiful kind of click it feels almost like there's you know this might be like a ball bearing type setup i don't know um how they did this i haven't popped it off yet but i'm very impressed with the 120 click action here very very smooth um still very precise uh you know there's i, I guess i don't know if i'd call it play i mean yeah you can it's it's not um i'd say as dialed in as our next uh, comparison here in the Monta Ocean King, which actually, oh, sorry, I just have to have it back here at the 12 perfectly. Otherwise, it'll bother me. Um, the Ocean King here, lovely watch. And here we have the 60 click bezel that is just, you know, and this is a great example of a 60 click bezel that's actually more dialed in than 120 click. So even with, um, I guess more room for play it's that much it's just on another level oh yeah they actually feel quite similar except you know this one just is a little bit tighter more dialed in just beautiful tactile feel even with the gloves really really nice so let's go ahead and get these guys side by side now here you can see Monta uses a little bit more of a uh, modern design as well um, with their dial, it's a bit more expansive. You have the black rehot um, there, uh, which actually helps the dial extend the dial out. But these uh, the indices and the indexes there, um, you can see are actually uh, closer to the center, which actually does make the dial read a little bit smaller, um, which I think really gives it more of a classic, uh, you know, closer to something 
like a classic sub as far as the proportions. It's a little bit larger, maybe in between these two as far as, uh, you know, a slightly larger than a vintage uh, sub, but slightly smaller um, than the Mark III Trident here. So, I mean, of course, when you look at this, uh, some of the differences are you're going to get that female end link versus the male end link. So it's this is actually going to, the, the, the lug to lug is going to be a true measurement here versus the lug to lug here. You are going to have a little bit of an extension there, as you can see. So even though you're measuring the lug to lug because of that male center link, it is going to extend a little bit farther. But you know what? They both were extremely, extremely well. But the thing that I think a lot of people want to know about, right, is, is the quality. Um, and, and what I'll tell you straight up is that the Christopher Ward, I would say, is more complex, but it's it's not in by means of fit or finish quite to the same level of the Monta Ocean King. I mean, the Monta Ocean King is, you know, is, is really something special, uh, you know, at under $2,000, what this thing can offer you. You put it on your wrist and it, and it makes an Oris Aquas uh, feel cheap next to it, honestly. it's it's And I love the Aquas. I, I own the Aquas. Um, and the only thing that stopped me from buying the updated version is like it's almost unbearable for me to spend that type of money for a watch that just doesn't compare. And and you know uh, when you have something like this um, in the same price range or or slightly above, you know, depending on if you're going gray market or whatever for the Oris, and then you have something like this underneath um, that is you know basically gray market. You know, if you find a really good deal, you can probably get an Oris for, you know, right around nine, 900, 10 bucks, like you're going to get with the Christopher Ward here, except the Christopher Ward is going to come with this insane, you know, five year warranty. Um, so, you know, bezel actions, very similar, except you have the whole 120 clicks here versus the, uh, the versus the 60 click, you know, very organic lines as far as these crown guards. Uh, beautiful transitions and whatnot and the finishing you can see here um, I'd say Monta went a bit more traditional with their finishings um, you know they kept it very very simple uh, you know the very high polish the sharp transitions those bevels whatnot keeping the bevels having to run all the way through articulating really taking um, you know those blueprints that have been left behind you know, by watches, of course, like the Rolex Sub, uh, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, the uh, Omega Seamaster, uh, at taking that DNA and just refining it and polishing it, beautifully brushing it to a luxury level. This feels ex like a luxury timepiece, you know, of course, sans the name, right? Although Monta has a great reputation already. Um, here, the, the, the experience when you're wearing the Christopher Ward is definitely more of a tool watch it's and it's a damn good tool watch so this feels i'd say it feels more uh, akin to a pelagos than it does to a rolex sub in the and just kind of the more uh, obviously it's 600 meters water resistant versus 300 which is a bit of the standard i would honestly like to see a 300 meter uh, trident that was slimmed down and whatnot um, but uh, honestly at that point you almost think it, it would be a different watch maybe call it the c50 instead of the c60 because uh um, this is, you know, such an interesting watch. It's it's basically a Seamaster competitor with uh, Planet Ocean uh, specs uh, in a package that is very Seamaster-like as far as its scale goes um, and, and, you know, and its feature set. Of course, now you're getting more comparable there with the milling. Uh, you do have a really great system here. But it's similar to Rolex's Glide Lock system, but... Um, you know, not quite the same. Of course, with my gloves, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult. Everything's just the next level as far as finishing and the details go. You can see the underside. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty similar here. You know, very smooth. I'd say, you know, even more uh, smooth to use than the Rolex traditional glide lock. Definitely smoother to use than the Genoa, which isn't a bad setup at all. It's very close. Um, the, the thing here is uh, you could definitely probably get more adjustability, uh, especially by the length of this uh, particular class. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's something, obviously, this is just the second generation of the Ocean King. And as they continue to tweak and refine, uh, those types of details are going to continue to change. But this feels, you know, it feels 
twice as expensive, three times, four times. I mean, this thing it feels like a million bucks on the wrist, and I just can't, uh, you know, sing the praises enough for Monta as a brand. I think they've definitely made a lot of the right moves. But, of course, a brand like Christopher Ward, huge fan, and, and what they're doing um, you know, at this price point is just unheard of. And a lot of it has to do with how popular they are. They can actually move volume Swiss made timepieces of this quality of this feature set. It's really unheard of, um, you know. So with that said, let's actually start getting some uh, some wrist transitions uh, so you guys can just kind of see how All these right. wear. As you can see here, uh, definitely wears like a tool watch, but it wraps really well. And even though it does have that male, uh, and length that comes out and and add a little bit of length. You can see everything tapers, wraps, and just shows love to the to the wrist, and it's really nice. V you know, very comfortable, beautiful clasp there. Very chunky and reassuring. This is definitely more on the tool side of these two comparatives here. Now, just you know, very easy to take off, of course, because you do have just the trigger deployment there versus having the folding flip lock. Um, and then when we compare that to the more traditional Genoa, which is basically going to be kind of uh, that sweet spot of uh, Submariner, uh, you know, fitment, you can see very nice, but uh, at the same time, a more simple approach to the way it's gonna fit on the wrist. You have that case back that does lift it a bit off of the wrist, but I mean, um, it's, it's you know, not at all a bad thing. You can see it still lays really, really nice in there, especially because I wear my watches a little looser, a little lower on the wrist, you know, above or below, depending on if you're holding your hand up or letting it hang down, but past the, uh, the wrist bone there, uh, for me, it's just a little more comfortable. And, you know, it really takes advantage of being able to articulate because the case back does lift a bit off of the skin there. Um, really nice, and as you can see, beautiful taper, which adds that refinement. Um, and speaking of the taper, that's definitely something that Monta got right with their setup as well. They just have a beautiful taper, as you can see here, from 20, you know, again, down to or pretty much the, the those Rolex magic numbers. Um, I believe to a 16 and then you have the uh, uh, clasp here which is just machined beautifully uh, as you can see there wears wonderful but you know when you compare it to something like here with uh, the uh, the trident the trident definitely you know Although it's not finished to the same level, it doesn't have the fit to the same level, you know, as far as the tightness and, and the way everything comes together of the uh, of the Ocean King. It, it basically makes up for it in way of complexity, in the way, in the little tricks. See, here with the Monta, it's not using any tricks. It's using just old school, high class finishing, high details. Here, we've got a couple of tricks, and I think that, uh, you know, uh, basically, Christopher Ward took uh, from the playbook of Seiko, as you can see here, right? So you have the traditional uh, beautiful high polished bevel that breaks the plane there uh, between the satin, you know, that, that brushing. But what happens is underneath here, they did this little trick where they actually have it, you know, formed into the case with a lip. So you can have a high polish there and then you have the brush um, and it's actually a lot less work versus if you were to actually try to bevel that out. So what they did there um, is something similar to what you'll see on like a Seiko Sarb, except it's on the top of the case, basically, and then uh, where it breaks uh, the brushing from the polishing. Uh, so that is just a nice little trick. So they're doing these little things uh, to basically, uh, you know, get you more kind of bang per buck. Um, and and you know where they can't compete with something like this from Monta, they find other ways to kind of uh, give you still visual interest. So instead of just being super impressed with the luxurious feel and the high attention to detail, here they they kind of bake in some details that are just really really cool, and they and they also add some feature sets that are really nice. Um, you know, of course, to shorten the lugs, it would have been nice to have you know that uh, female. And link like you see here, but this is a very traditional setup. Sure, it's a traditional setup done 
excellently just absolute top class but here they are like hey well let's just add this feature this will work definitely better you just pinch these you pull these off and it gives you some added versatility now um you know and you can switch things out you can go to rubber you can go to leather uh, they don't have the fitted end straps or anything like that like you do with the monta but i mean of course that's part of being part of that um everest umbrella of products um that you know you, you get the best pretty much the best fitted end leather and rubber straps available so that you know there's a certain there are levels to this game and the monta ocean king is definitely somewhere riding quite high but you know what let's go ahead and actually get some low light transition and some loom so you guys can do a little bit of uh comparison with the uh with this x1 loom versus the more uh, traditional BGW-9 and the reason why uh, this was chosen of course uh, as far as that that goes is because the the loom appears much whiter so this the C the C1 is a very white loom with the X the 1X X1 but basically the updated version uh, actually adds quite a bit of glow while still looking very white versus something like C3 BGW9 is a little bit of a different beast it doesn't have quite that initial uh, brightness um, but it has a lot of longevity and also it has the cool blue tone but let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look oh, okay let's go ahead and hit the lights so as you can see here, the, the green definitely has a bit more of just that initial punch in, in the teeth there um, and it is, is very legible uh, versus you can see with the BGW-9 on both sides, it's still very blue, uh, has that great blue hue, it doesn't have quite the visual impact. Um, but does have some nice longevity and you know BGW9 is pretty much the loom of choice for a lot of brands. Um, I enjoy, I, I actually don't mind kind of the off coloration and the green tones that shine through uh, C3. I, I definitely can appreciate the glow that it provides and this new C1 is definitely seems like somewhere in between uh, those two points, uh, you know, as far as uh, being kind of a happy median of uh of the brightness while also providing uh, a nice amount of just uh you know some longevity now uh what i like to do here is just get some low light transition so you can kind of get an idea and see the finishing and the way the light plays off of these you know these deep inky black dials just suck the light into a black hole and help keep these watches ultimately legible. Absolutely beautiful. So, I didn't mean for this to be such a long review or full review, um, but I'm sure it's gonna probably end up being the standard 20-ish minutes, just because I can just ramble on and on about these guys. And you know, you're looking at three watches, so I you know, have to talk a little bit about each of them and give them their due um, so I know that sure this you know probably is you know a little unfair to compare it right now because it's not in it quite in its final form this is of course but I think uh, the cool thing is when you think about it we'll go ahead and turn the lights back on the ocean rover is in its first iteration uh, which I think is interesting because be the Christopher Ward Trident is in its third full iteration and the Monta is in its second, right? So you kind of have that first gen, second gen, third gen. Of course, there are incremental changes that they may make along the way, updates in the clasps and whatnot, different bezels, different movements. There are things that happen that don't necessarily justify it, considering it the Mark II or the Gen II or V2 or V3 and, and so on and so forth. Um, but you know, in this price range, it's tough to find better watches. If you're looking for a Seamaster or Submariner alternative and you're just like over the marketing, over the branding and just want really high quality timepieces, you can't go wrong with any of these. And uh, although this was meant to really be 
a uh, comparative for the Trident to see kind of where it lays in the market, which I think people kind of already understand the Geno, uh, as much love it or hate it for what it is, you can't deny the quality. Um, it's it's just next level for the price you're paying. Um, similarly, just the next, take that to the next degree, right, is, is the Monta Ocean King. Um, and it's it basically updates, refines, and just smooths over like a fine, I mean, it's it's like you just ran this thing through a filter or something, and and it just uh, took at all those classic mid-century diver cues and and turned it into something just absolutely beautiful and elegant and and a true testament to the strength of the dive watch and why it's so versatile. And then you have something in between um, that I think does harken back in, in a lot of ways, um, but at the same time. Uh, is looking at the future and has more of a tool, you know, tool tastic vibe. Um, you know, a watch. I would definitely feel better about beating up the Trident Three, and not just because of the pricing, but you know, with the full pol, you know, the the I should say the full brushing on. You know, it doesn't even have polished sides on the links. Excuse me, uh, on the links of the bracelet. Um, so. And that's that's one case uh, where I just feel like this thing is just built like a tank, um, and it's a damn good looking tank at that. Uh, I think it's it's quite handsome as is. I know there's going to be some issues. I actually recently picked up a blue model uh, version where uh, I think you actually get a better contrast on that twin flag logo underneath the twelve, and I think people will actually find that aesthetically a little bit feeling more balanced. I'm glad they didn't just paint it white. Um, because I think it just it would be too much of a contrast and look too busy um, So I'm glad they did this kind of ghosting affair um, and, and I just think that it works a little bit better on the blue because of the contrast of the ghosted flag uh, Against the blue dial uh, actually stands out a bit more versus here You can see it kind of can disappear especially under the studio lights But in person it, it does disappear a bit easier on the black so if you kind of like that open space style look maybe the black one's for you but if you need a little bit more contrast and feel a little bit more balance on the dial the i think the blue model works really really well um so let me know what you guys think in the comments below i know this one you know uh some of you just wanted to see stuff and probably didn't want to hear me talk about it and some of you are maybe listening to this uh like it's a podcast and <laughs> you just have it going on in the background while you're checking email and uh checking the score on uh, the Warriors game. So, you know, just uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys own any of these three watches, uh, how do you feel about the scale? Obviously, I don't have the 40 millimeter release that's only available in black. I think it would have been nice. But I one thing that I will mention why I really do like the 42 is because of the scale um and those proportions so the proportions are for that center link are actually the same across the 40 and the 38 uh, as far as i can tell anyway so i think it wears the best um on the with the 22 millimeter lug that tapers down to 18 um just because it has more of a pronounced taper i'm, I'm digging that anyways i'm talking i won't stop you know what if you like the video hit like if you don't hit dislike if you want to subscribe to either troll the hell out of me or give me some support and love, do either or, but subscribe. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.